A lot of the time, if we make animations for our player character, especially for smaller indie games, there will be really rough transitions between animations, especially noticeable when the player starts running or changes direction. And this isn't really a bad thing. Most players don't really care, but if you want to add a little extra polish, it can be good to add some nice animation transitions. First, you need to actually make the transitions, of course. In my case, I'm just gonna show you two. Um, the first is for if you are in the ready position and then you want to transition to the running animation. That means we need just two frames, okay? So basically this plays first, then this plays, and this last frame moves into the next frame of the running animation. So it just makes that start running a lot smoother. It's hardly noticeable, but it's, it's nice. The other one that I'm gonna show you is a reverse animation. So if you're running to the right and then all of a sudden switch to run to the left, the reverse animation can be handy because it will make that reversal a little more smooth. And it's also really great going from the ready animation to running as well as running one direction to the other. So if you have a sudden change of direction, this is a really great animation to add. One tip is draw it backwards of what you usually drew. Like, like most of these animations, the character is facing to the right. This one though, the reverse animation, the character is facing to the left because um, so the first one I'm gonna show you, which is it's just because it's a little easier, um, is the start running animation. You just need one variable for that, which is starting run. It's by default set to true because if you are not running, then the starting run is going to be true because you haven't started running yet. So this will also be set to true anytime you are not moving. Set it back to true once you're not moving. I have a little bit of buffer here, I think it I can't remember why. I think it makes it just a little smoother. So if you're not moving, set starting run to true. Now, the logic behind it here is anytime you start moving, if you push right or you push left, if the starting run uh, variable is true, then play the start running animation. And we only want this animation to play once. So in the animated sprite node, I, I named it sprite, so that's probably confusing, but this is a animated sprite node. Um, we want to connect a signal of animation finished. It's really easy to connect these. You just double click and then double click on the node with the uh, script that you want to attach it to. I've already done this and I have it here. So it generates a function like this. So anytime any of the animations finish, it's going to call this function, but you only want it to really do anything when certain animations finished. So in this case, it's the start running animation. So if the start running animation finishes, turn the starting run variable to false. Okay, so as soon as this starting run variable turns false, this will no longer be true. So it's only gonna play once. The next frame, it'll start playing the running animation. Really simple, really sweet. Same thing for the left and the right. Uh, not too hard to implement that one. Now the logic for the other one is basically the same. The only major difference is you're changing how the variables are set. I, and there's two variables in this case. I found it was easier with two variables because with just one, it really hurts my brain. Uh, hopefully the names of these aren't too complex or confusing. I'll try to explain it. If you are facing left, then you have a need to reverse to the right. And if you are facing right, then reverse to the left. When you start the game, you're by default facing right. And so you don't have a need to reverse to the right but you do have a need to reverse to the left. The way these are set is based on when you push the right or left arrow key. So if you push the right arrow key, you are now facing right. And so reverse to left will become true because you have a need to reverse to the left. And if you push the left arrow key, you are now facing left and you no longer have a need to reverse to the left, but you do need to reverse to the right. So reverse to right becomes true. So what happens when you push a key to move, let's say you mo want to move to the right, then reverse to, if reverse to right is true, meaning you were just facing left before you pushed the move to right key. So you have a need to reverse to right, so play the reverse animation. And then just as before, a signal is going to be sent when any animation completes. But in this case, if the reverse animation completes, then we want to set that variable to false. And so the next frame that gets called, it's gonna say, oh, you you've, you no longer have a need to reverse to the right because you played the reverse animation. So this is not gonna be true anymore. And so the running animation will start playing normally. Same thing, but to the left, I'm gonna explain it one more time just in case. Okay, so if you push the left button and you were facing to the right, 
If you were facing to the right, you have a need to reverse to the left. Play the reverse animation. As soon as that animation completes, set the variable reverse to left to false because you no longer have a need to reverse to left. You just did. Then the next frame that plays will be the running animation because this will no longer ring true. And you can kind of see these tie together. You have to add a little bit more logic with every single animation transition you add because each time it becomes a little more complex and there's more conditions that you have to check. Um, and so good luck if you really want to add a lot because it gets it, it turns your code to spaghetti real fast, especially when you're experimenting and trying to figure out what will work. But taking this logic, I'm sure you can add all sorts of smoother animation transitions for your game, giving it that polish that you really need. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and it was helpful to you. Um, if not, sorry, not sorry, I don't know. But thanks for watching. Have a beautiful day.